In this lesson, we're going to explore the oxidation and reduction reactions of alkenes. You're probably familiar with oxidation and reduction from your introductory chemistry course. Oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain of electrons. And in those courses, primarily we focused on oxidation and reduction of metals, where we could look at the formal charge of the metal ion, or the oxidation number of the metal to determine whether oxidation or reduction is occurring. In an organic context, oxidation and reduction are a little bit different because metals tend not to be oxidized or reduced in organic reactions. And to understand how carbon or other nonmetals can undergo oxidation or reduction, we have to change our paradigm and change our thinking a little bit. So we're going to explore some of the general aspects of oxidation and reduction in organic chemistry in this lesson and look at specific examples of reduction and oxidation reactions of alkenes which contain a carbon-carbon double bond. To understand oxidation and reduction in organic reactions we really focus on two general concepts. The first is a concept that we've seen many times already throughout the course, electronegativity. Electronegativity relates to oxidation and reduction since more electronegative atoms pull electrons toward themselves and if an electronegative atom is pulling electrons away from, say, a carbon, we can think of that as oxidation if the carbon started with greater electron density. Related to this is the idea of bond polarity. Changes in bond polarity, especially very substantial changes due to very large swings in electronegativity, can be associated with oxidation or reduction, since these amount to very significant changes in the electron density of an atom within an organic structure. We know from introductory chemistry that oxidation corresponds to the loss of electrons from an atom or group, while reduction corresponds to the gain of electrons by an atom or group. This is still true in an organic context, but instead of focusing on metal atoms or ions, we focus on the polarization of bonds primarily to carbon, although, although we can also think about oxidation at oxygen, nitrogen, other non-metal atoms as well. Our focus here is going to be on carbon. Oxidation at carbon involves the replacement of a carbon-hydrogen or a carbon-carbon bond with a bond to a more electronegative heteroatom, and the, the new bond may be a single, double, or even triple bond. One thing to notice here is that H2 has effectively been eliminated from the substrate, but I put it in quotes here to emphasize that H2 isn't a direct byproduct of oxidation reactions in most cases, but is incorporated into whatever oxidizing agent is used to accomplish this transformation. Reduction is simply the reverse process. The replacement of a bond between carbon and an electronegative heteroatom, such as nitrogen, with a bond to hydrogen. And here again, the bond to the electronegative heteroatom in the starting material now can be a single, double, or triple bond. In reduction reactions, the elements of H2 are added to the organic substrate. However, here again, we typically don't accomplish this by adding, for example, hydrogen gas. Instead, a source of H- and H- are added in two separate stages to accomplish this process. Just to emphasize these points again, in an oxidation process, H2 itself usually isn't eliminated. Instead, H- and H- are incorporated into the atoms of the oxidizing agent. Another way to think about this is that the oxidizing agent itself undergoes reduction through the addition of two hydrogen atoms. We have essentially the opposite situation in the reduction case. H- is added in the first stage, followed by treatment with an acid to add H+, so that the net result is the addition of H2 to the substrate. One important exception to this idea that we'll see in this lesson is the use of hydrogen gas directly with alkenes to accomplish reduction. In the grand scheme of things, though, this is relatively uncommon. And so in these general discussions, I want to emphasize that reduction is typically accomplished through the addition of H- followed by H+. What about alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes? Conversion between these types of substrates involves the exchange of carbon-hydrogen for carbon-carbon bonds, or vice versa. Because it involves a loss of H2, the conversion of HCCH, such as we might find in, say, an alkane, to a carbon-carbon double bond plus H2 is considered oxidation. There's a loss of H2 that occurs in the organic substrate, which is analogous to the oxidation that we saw in the last slide. And then, of course, the opposite process in which H2 is added to, say, an alkene or an alkyne to form new HCCH bonds is considered reduction since H2 is incorporated or added to the organic substrate. The conversion of an alkane to an alkene involves the loss of two hydrogen atoms from the substrate, and this is easiest to see if we add implied hydrogens to the alkane starting material and alkene product. We can see that 
two hydrogen atoms have been lost from the organic substrate in this reaction, and for that reason, it's considered oxidation. You'll also hear this referred to as dehydrogenation, since we're undoing the incorporation of hydrogen into the alkene in a sense. The reverse process is called hydrogenation, and this is a reduction process since it involves the incorporation or addition of two additional hydrogen atoms into the substrate. This converts an alkene into an alkane. In dehydrogenation reactions, the oxidizing agent typically doesn't cause the generation of H2 gas. This is the normal situation for oxidations that we saw in the last slide. Here's our relatively unique case of reduction using hydrogen gas, and one of the only reasons this works in an alkene context is that a metal catalyst, typically platinum or palladium, is provided along with the hydrogen gas to lower the activation energy of the reaction, as we'll see in the next video.